So that part was part of the, you had a premiere in the UK for a movie because Dennis is, for those of you listening out there, Dennis is not just one of the all time legendary bass players. Um, I guess of rock and roll, not just the original Alice Cooper band. It's it's you made a statement amongst bass in your whole genre. So you're also an author with uh, your book that you've written, and, and you're also now a, are, you, are you, snakes. There it is, right on the screen. Snakes hey. uh, routines and electric cares. Look at our where our art staff is top notch, and when I mean staff, I just mean Vic because he knows how Thanks, to do that stuff like no other. <laughs> You the man. <laughs> but you're all you are an author, but you're also now are you executive producer, producer, director of this live from the Astroturf that I would had the pleasure of being in. But tell uh, us more well, about the movie. Well, well, the way it came together is uh basically uh I heard from Chris Penn, who owns good records in Dallas. Yeah. And uh he kept saying right when my book came out he kept saying hey come to my record store and i'll do a book signing event for you and you know my publisher is saying well we should stick to bookstores and book festivals and our record shop probably isn't going to be worthwhile you know so they don't know they don't know that record shop that record shop is killer uh neither did i really Mm -hmm. but man uh, chris's persistence is uh, infectious so uh, finally, you know, uh, we got a date and he, uh, I, which I didn't know was a, a day when you guys had a day off on your tour. <laughs> he knew that, yeah. but so, um, you know, I, uh, it started out just me saying, well, would you fly Neil Smith and Michael Bruce out there if, if, uh, if I can talk him into it? So. So we planned on that. And then I found out he was hounding Alice. And I said, okay, chill on that. Let me take care of that part. And, yeah. and then, uh, uh, you know, the, the stars were in alignment. And not only did we uh, uh, pull this thing off without a rehearsal, really. I mean, oh, there was definitely no rehearsal. It was, it was very serendipitous. It just, everything just happened. And like you say, the stars aligning. I remember we were on tour with Motley Crue and uh, Alice goes, hey, you want to come down and jam a couple songs? I had no idea that it was going to end up being a movie with drone cameras and really personal interviews with, with Chris Penn. Chris Penn became... Maybe he did it himself, like the way that Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky for himself. I think Christopher Penn actually wrote that movie with you guys as the subject, but you know, knowing that he was going to be the sort of uh, protagonist, I guess the the hero of the film, because he really comes across great. Uh, well, he just is the hero, but no, no, you're giving it way too much credit. It was all <laughs> it was all flying by the seat of your pants. I mean. Uh, Michael and Neil and I did a sound check, which basically was getting the amps working and getting the drums set up the way he wanted. We we didn't even run through all the songs. We weren't even sure what songs we were going to do. And then uh, uh, the next night, of course, you sat in and, and we hadn't played a note together before that. So, uh, so uh, the thing is that once... Chris Penn realized that he's going to have the original Alice Cooper group play in his r- tiny record store, uh, yeah. which is actually big by record store, uh, you know, a great record store. It's wonderful. Actually, he's moved to another location and he's because of the situation now he's doing online. If you want to order records from good record, uh, good records, you can get pretty much anything you want sent to your home. But well, anyway, he's watching the live stream. I invite you on, Chris uh, Penn, right now. If you want to come on, just yeah, stick come on, it. Chris. Because I know you're probably watching. You're probably creeping around the comments board somewhere. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying hearing the story about how it all came together. And now it actually got released into. You've done a lot of premieres. I was at the New York premiere with Calico Cooper and Chuck Garrick, and we were able to uh, premiere it. And that was the first actual movie premiere that I've been a part of. So where have you done these premieres and, you know, how is the success? What's the plan for the movie now? Uh, well, you know, we've, uh, Live from the AstroTurf has won five awards in oh, film festivals. Uh, we've had it in Phoenix, uh, Detroit, 
Uh, I know I'm going to forget Dallas, of course. Uh, Manchester, New York. Uh, New York City was a biggie. Uh, Hollywood. So we've it's been all over the place uh, in film festivals and gotten extremely good uh, rave reviews. Uh, but I'm also plugging another film that I made called Cold Cold Coffin. And, and uh, that won best music video at the uh, Los Angeles Motion Picture Film Festival just recently. Well, I remember so, that being the, that was the film. It was like sort of a double feature. And it was a right. cold, cold coffin video that you would show and then live at the AstroTurf. And who else uh, stars in Cold, Cold Coffin with you in that video? Oh, yeah. So uh, Calico Cooper. And, mm -hmm. you know, you think, oh, my God, what? Really? How did that happen? Well, first of all, we were looking. Uh, we wanted to have a dancer and we wanted somebody that would play a young gold digging wife. Uh, and I'm playing the older eccentric who owns the castle, right? Calico and, Cooper was born for that role. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, so we were uh, checking out the New York City, just full of dancers, you know, but then I'm going, wait a minute, you know what? Uh, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl could do it, but, uh, but Calico is, as you know, you know, almost a clone of Cheryl on stage when, when she's dancing. So uh, I said, oh, wait They're a minute. They're both very animated. I will get, definitely give you that. And sorry, Calco, I know you're listening. So you are not a gold digger. You're just born no. in that role. Oh, that are role. you kidding? Calico <laughs> is wonderful. Oh, oh my, my God. She's, so there's a scene in Cold Cold Coffin where we're supposed to be getting married, right? Okay. And so the, the priest is there reading the vows and everything. And, and so the camera is over my shoulder at, with her expression. And then the, can, the camera is over her shoulder with my expression. But while the camera's behind her aimed at me, she's crossing her eyes and sticking out her tongue and everything. <laughs> and I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, how, this is what leads me to my next uh, sort of, I'm interested in it and maybe people are actually interested as I am, but I'm definitely close to it because it, you raised the money for this cold, cold coffin through crowdfunding. You went through a Kickstarter and I'm doing a Kickstarter now, right now with my guitar lessons. So I'm trying to reach my goal through that. You guys, how did it uh, work out with funding the cold, cold coffin video? And, and was it as hard or was it easier than you expected with all these types way, of things these days? Way, way, way harder. In fact, I'm still not done shipping all of the items. And so you've got to be better than me at it. But we had, uh, uh, well, first of all, I had like a warehouse full of uh, tour booklets from 1973 and stuff like that. It pays so, to be a hoarder, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's weird. I guess I am a hoarder, but... I don't look at it that way. It just I just look at it like when it comes time to sort through stuff and throw stuff yeah. out, I'd rather write a song. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you never know. Someday you might need that tour book from 1970, which it actually came in handy for this, right? Yeah, it worked out great. I mean, we uh, shipped all kinds of stuff. Chris Penn is, uh, uh, you know, everybody says, thank God for Chris Penn. Well, that's because the packaging on everything he does is amazing which he does, he says, in tribute to the packaging that the Alice Cooper group, you know, has did, uh, you know, the wallet for Billion Dollar Babies and the school desk and all that kind of stuff. You guys are known for good packaging. But then, then again, back in the 70s, the packaging and the whole presentation of the vinyl album was art. It really was. I mean, I'm really lucky to have a guy like uh, Scotty Hagen over at, at Bellyache Records that feels that same sort of thing. Yeah, you, yeah, some, you do. You had some classic uh, packaging. And of course, live from the AstroTurf, yeah, I, I just, you know, of course, it just dawned on me. It started out as like a three-song EP, right? Or four-song. And then it expanded into larger and larger projects. And then it became a movie. I love it. Right. Well, what happened is, first of all, Chris Penn had bands come and play at the store regularly and it had he had green astroturf on the stage 
but he repainted the store to go with the pink panties on the cover of uh, uh, Snakes, Guillotines, Electric Chairs, my book. And, and he got pink AstroTurf. And so, uh, as you saw when you got there, uh, yeah. and so uh, uh, all of these things add up to just, uh, he's giving fans what he imagines he would want to get. But, you know, he said that our night was the first time that the recording came out for the entire show. He said everybody else he's ever recorded something would mess up halfway through the set and they would lose the base or whatever, you know. I kind of feel like that with this podcast, with this live stream podcast, because I just looked down at my recorder going, um, I hope this makes it all the way through because this is a good interview and I definitely want to put slap the good audio on it and stuff. But yeah, so maybe you're our good okay. luck for good audio. Oh, okay, I'm raising the bar for you. Well, the Beatles raised the bar for album packaging. Yeah. But, but you know, like they did so many things like that. But we also had Warner Brothers who were really good at uh, coming through when it came to doing something that cost a little extra. Now, to get back to good records, so Chris Penn, last minute, calls his, his friend, Steve, Stephen Gaddis, who, is the, uh, uh, who made the film, right. and says, you know, I'm not going to believe this happened on Monday morning. You know, get, can you get down here and just uh, do some footage for my own personal uh, archive? And he did. But then when, you know, uh, about a week later, uh, Stephen called Chris and said, you know what, this came out too good. We've got a film here. Wow. So so they started working on it. The, the hardest part of making the film look as good as it did uh, is that uh, Chris Penn had this bright idea of using all red lights. And as you know, that's the hardest thing to photograph. <laughs> I've seen the movie Seven down in the uh, uh, the, the S and M part. That that one David Fincher film. I don't know why that just came to me, but that weird lighting. Yeah, it's, nothing ever comes out that good. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, everything looks red. Uh, but so then the sound came out good because Justin Cordelou and Bob Ezrin mixed the tracks for us. So. Nice. So it sounds like a live band. You've seen the film. So, I mean, uh, I, I've seen it, uh, let's see, probably about at least seven times in theaters. And uh, a couple of times, man, they had it cranked to where, I mean, you could feel the bass in your chest. <laughs> it was great. Actually, Manchester had it cranked nicely. It sounds like a real band. It, I it just really didn't does. see the movie. I lived it. See, I've been waiting to say that in an interview for so long. I just didn't. I didn't see it. I just well, oh man, I, it was so great to have you show up and and uh, last minute. I mean that, you know, the thing, the illusion is that uh, we just show up and we do our thing and it sounds good, right? But no, you had to talk to Michael Bruce about which parts he was going to play because a lot of the parts that he normally plays are the ones that you play, right? Yeah, it was a little bit uh, flying by the seat of my pants, but because I've been in both those positions for as many years and because I've been playing your songs uh, for as many years as I have with Alice Cooper, I kind of knew, okay, well, if he's going to go for this uh, inversion of this chord, I'll just go the upper register. And it, and it worked out. It really was one of those magical nights and I'm glad oh, yeah. that it turned into all this. When is the public going to be able to see? Well, uh, we're working on it. I mean, it has to, we have to talk, uh, you know, the Alice camp into helping us out. We have to, we have to, we're trying to find a deal with Netflix or something. So we're, yeah. We've been working very hard to make something happen that'll get it out to more than the expected Alice Cooper fan base who are all wonderful and they will get it as soon as we can make that happen. But uh, we have bigger ideas in, in mind to help spread the, the news of uh, this film to uh, more of a mass audience. We'll see. Awesome. I mean, well, uh, you know, the... When, once the uh, licensing to be able to use the music in film festivals runs out, that'll kind of uh, move us on to a next uh, level of uh, deadlines, you know, in making it, getting it well, out there. I hope for two reasons that people get to see, or, you know, the movie comes out on a national platform. One, 
the people deserve to see it. They need to see this, um, you know, three quarters of the original Alice Cooper band on stage kicking ass. And two, I'm going to get more than a slap on the back and a free uh, Mexican restaurant meal out of uh, Christopher <laughs> Penn. How about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. He knows where the good ones are in Dallas. Wow. Oh, he took me to one, but that's that, that's what I've gotten paid so far. So you can see. <laughs> well, me too. Let's say. Well, actually, I'm in the red, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> he owes me a, a, a more Mexican rest uh, dinner. So, so uh, okay. So in the film, you see the part where we had finished doing six songs, and then we go in the back room, and you're like, "Hey, we got to do elected," and we're all going, "What? We haven't played elected like." Alice said 20 years. I know it was more than that. I mean, we haven't played elected in like 40 years at least. And uh, so we're like, oh, my God. Oh, geez. And I'm uh, not sure if that was me. I, I think uh, Cesar Sabatini, our stage manager for the Alice Cooper band. Oh, he, Cesar I think, wanted I think it? He takes credit for that. I'm not entirely okay. sure. Don't quote me. Okay. Don't quote me. I think he takes credit for it. Hey, guys, you ought to do an encore. Go do it. And, and all of a sudden, we just went out there and did a couple uh, more songs, which was cool because that ended it, you know, it, it ended possibly a very short set to be, you know, lengthened into a movie. Right. Uh, but but I love what Neil said later, because in the movie, you see, we're, we come back out to do Elected and we're all standing there. And Alice says, look, everybody's waiting to see who's going to start it. And then when we played the song and we went back into the back room, Neil said exactly what I was thinking at the, at the time. He said, we hit the first chord. And then he said to himself, what the F happens next? <laughs> but of course, once uh, Michael started his Dolly Dagger riff, then you can hear Neil, the very first bass drum beat is a little hesitant, but once he gets, once he figures that out, then we're off and running. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, we're gonna have to have him on the show. And, and you know what, a drummer's edition, maybe have Neil and Glenn Sobel on at the same time. We oh. do get a little bit. Hello folks, Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. Thanks. Yeah.